Hi, and welcome to our presentation on mathematical modelling of infectious diseases. So here's our summary today. So maths can be used to model the spread of infectious disease. And there are numerous different models to do this, but one of the simplest is the SIR model. And linking into the quote on the board, the model is not perfect, but with certain assumptions and variables, disease epidemics can be roughly modelled and predicted through the use of the SIR model. So the model splits the population up into three categories. Susceptible, infected, and recovered members of the population. Some assumptions of the model include people mix randomly, the population size is fixed, no one is initially immune, and recovered individuals are immune. So on the graph behind me, you can see that the blue line represents the susceptible members of the population, the red the infected, and the green the recovered members of the population. So there are two main parameters in an SIR model, the first being beta. Beta controls how often contact between a susceptible person and an infected person results in the susceptible person becoming infected. So if they, make B, uh, X, if they have an X percent chance of coming into contact with the disease and Y percentage chance of this contact resulting in infection, beta will equal X times Y. When beta equals zero, individuals have a 0% chance of coming into contact with the disease, therefore the graph will stay constant. As beta then increases, more people will become infected earlier, so there is a sudden spike of infected people at the start. This also means the disease will die off quicker and more individuals recover. The second parameter is gamma. Gamma controls the rate that an infected person will move into the recovered stage. So, if the infection lasts for k days, gamma will equal 1 divided by k. This is because all individuals will recover from the disease in an SIR model. However, in an SI model, gamma equals zero, therefore individuals will not move into the recovered stage. As the gamma then increases, the time taken for an individual to recover decreases. So the maximum amount of individuals infected at a time decreases. Due to this, more people will become immune quicker, so the infection will die off quicker. The basic reproduction number is a combination of beta and gamma. This shows how many people, on average, a single person will infect. So, if they, have beta, uh, beta, uh, if they make beta contacts resulting in new infections and gamma as a mean infectious period, basic reproduction number will equal beta divided by gamma. When the basic reproduction number is greater than 1, the disease will spread throughout the population. This is an example graph where the basic reproduction number is greater than 1. When the basic reproduction number is less than one, the disease will die out before all insusceptible individuals are infected. This is an example graph where the basic reproduction number is less than one. So there are two types of epidemic models. The first one is a deterministic model. A deterministic model is when all of the parameters and conditions within the model are already fully defined. And so behind me, I have a model where all of them are completely solid lines. They're completely fluid. And uh, when we're modeling a deterministic model, it's fairly easy. These are fairly easy because everything is already fully defined. So a deterministic model will be an approximation of a stochastic model. And a stochastic model is where the parameters or conditions contain some kind of randomness. This could be one parameter, but this could be multiple. So a stochastic model will create some variance in one or more of these categories. So when we average out the stochastic models, we will get a roughly deterministic model. This variance and randomness within the models create, can create a very, very large number of possible outcomes of this epidemic. The SIR model is modelled using a system of differential equations. The differential equations show the rate of change of the amount of people in each category with respect to time. Looking at the first differential equation, this shows the rate of change of the number of people that are susceptible with respect to time. This is equal to negative beta, which is the transmission parameter, times the number of people that are susceptible, times the number of people that are infected, all over n. n is the total population size. So this is equal to the number of susceptible 
plus infected, plus recovered. The brackets in T show that they're functions of time. So it's the number of people that are susceptible and infected at a given time. The rate of change of the number of people that have recovered is equal to gamma times the number of infected at a given time. This is because gamma is the rate that people are becoming recovered. Taking this into account, the rate of change of the number of people that are infected with respect to time is equal to the rate of change of the number of people that are susceptible minus the rate of change of the number of people that are recovered, which gives the equation shown behind me. Overall, as the population size n is fixed, this means that there's no change in the population size. Therefore, the rate of change of the number of people that are recovered plus infected plus susceptible is equal to zero. Looking at the graph behind me, you can see that the gradient changes with each line on the graph. And the gradient at a given point is equal to the rate of change of the number of people in that compartment, which you can find using the differential equation. So as Amy was saying, this is the deterministic model, which we coded in Python. And the way we did this is we used Euler's method, which is where you take very small intervals of x, calculate the gradient of each interval, and then plot this on a graph, using, and this is an approximation. And so we also did the stochastic model as well. And so in the top left, you can see we got five parameters this time instead of the two. We have the two beta, which is the transmission parameter, and we have the recovery parameter, which is gamma, except we have three new ones. So we've got dying and death, which control how deadly a disease is. And we also have the interaction parameter, which every, the model works on sort of a daily system. So every new day, this generates how much of the population is sampled. So then, as you can see on the right, right, um, you've got the while loop here, and that makes sure this will only run when there's infected people left, so the disease is still active. So what it will do is first, it will take a random sample of the population, and this will be based on the interaction parameter. And so in this population, it will then work out who's going to get infected. And so the more people that are infected in this sample, the higher the chance that a susceptible person will become infected. <laughs> and then after that, what it will do is it will work out who's going to die or who will recover. Now, for the purposes of the basic SIR model, um, these will be combined, so it doesn't really matter which one it happens. And then what it will do is it record how much are in each <coughs> section, so how many are susceptible, how many are infected, and how many are recovered. And then at the end, once it's finished, the daily system, so the while loop won't run anymore because the disease is dead or there's no more infected. And then it will plot these on the graph. And the graph on the right is a stochastic output from the previous program. And the one on the left is a deterministic. And so with the one on the right, the stochastic, you have to note that this is one output. It, could, it produces, each time you run this, it produces a different output. But if you take the average of all these outputs, it should produce the one on the left. And another thing we did is we also used object-orientated programming, which basically means we could have dis different diseases with different parameters, but they would all follow the same instructions so that we didn't have to recode multiple diseases. As a group, we also looked at herd immunity and vaccinations. For any disease, there's a critical immunization threshold, which we called Q. And this is the percentage of the population that need to be vaccinated to stop the disease from spreading. For a stable state, the reproduction number times the number of people that are susceptible is equal to 1. Also, the number of people that are susceptible is equal to 1 minus Q, as the people that are vaccinated aren't susceptible to the disease. Therefore, subbing in S as 1 minus Q, you can get that the reproduction number times 1 minus Q is equal to 1. Rearranging this, you can find that Q is equal to 1 minus 1 over the reproduction number. And this can be used for different diseases to work out how many people need to be vaccinated. So there are, the SIR model is a fairly basic model for uh, modelling epidemic diseases. But uh, by adding in other things like maternally derived immunity and exposed and occasionally we can also add in the, the recurrence when um, a disease mutates. So by adding these in, we can allow for much more diseases to be modelled. 
as each one behaves differently. Um, so an example of, a diff of an SIS model would be the common cold. The common cold uh, only contains the susceptible and infected categories due to the mutation each year that occurs. So at one point, you might be susceptible, you might become infected, but then you would instantly go back into the susceptible category due to the mutation of the disease. This allows you to be able to get the disease more than once. So here are our references that are also on the poster. And we'd like to thank you very much for listening, and we'd also like to thank TJ McKinley for setting us the project.